there's so much to be said about stocks that, you know, the reason why I think people often deviate towards an advisor uh, is because they get confused. You know, they, you know, people don't want to be bothered about going to read about it. You know, they want a financial guy that sit down and, and you know, financial advisors could be very, very helpful. Uh, uh, you just have to pick the right one. I had somebody come to me the other day. It was like, man, that's all gambling. This is y'all are Vegas people. Well, not really. There is a certain degree of chance that comes into play when it comes to stocks. And I'll give you an example. Um, COVID-19 happened, uh, coronavirus, and stocks dropped worldwide in the US by over 30%. Some stocks were down 50%, some were down 70. Some of those cruise lines were down 70%. So stocks do have a certain degree of, of, uh, of chance right? A COVID-19 could happen and you could lose 30%. However, in general, stocks follow uh, what I call, there's a method to the madness, right? Um, there's certain things that you look at when you buy stock. So let's say you buy a stock of Apple. I'm not recommending Apple or any of the stocks. I don't do that here. Uh, it's a, this is a public forum. And for you to buy a stock, uh, you don't just go out and buy an investment. You have to know why you're buying an investment. You have to buy the right investment for you. So I would recommend you go to your investment advisor or your uh, your you know the person who advises you or your, your your broker and get his advice on the specific types of stocks. So I'm not recommending Apple. When you buy a stock of Apple, you're buying an ownership interest in Apple. Now you own a piece of Apple. So if Apple does well, if Apple sells more iPhones in China and in Africa and in India, and in, in, in the US, um, Apple stock would go up, right? Because we all assume Apple's revenue, the money it's making from those phones is less than its expenses. So it has this thing called a profit. I explained to you previously what revenue is. Apple sells a phone for $1,000, that's its revenue. It has staff, it has those beautiful Apple stores. It has the components, it has chips. It has you know all kinds of things that go into making the phone. Those are its expenses. The difference between the, the revenue and the expenses is what you call a profit. That's one of the most important things you look for in buying a stock, profit. There's a lot of young internet companies out there that uh, don't make any profit uh, and are still valued very highly, You know, whether it's Uber, uh, Airbnb, uh, and, and a lot of those companies. The hope is that in the future, they will make money. Now, that's one very interesting thing to learn about stocks. Stocks are what you call a forward-looking instrument. Stocks look into the future to try to make a determination about what's gonna happen with that company. So when you buy a stock, you're not buying its history. You're not buying its current form, you're buying its future. So a company like Uber that may be making a loss or like Amazon for many, many years was still valued at billions of dollars, still making a loss, even though there was no profit. The stock market was looking into the future and projecting that a company growing that fast, a company with such a sustainable competitive advantage, a company that is, is so amazing like Amazon, in the future will have a profit. Therefore, we will pay today to earn that future profit. And that's pretty much what a stock is. A stock, the valuation of a stock in technical terms is basically the present value of a discounted stream of cash flows. Say that again, the value of a stock is the present value of the future stream of cash flows from the company. We want the stock to keep growing, right? Why would the stock price keep going up? because the profits are going up. So for any stock, one of the most important things you wanna pay attention to is profit. There's so many different types of uh, profit uh, matrix for different industries. For example, if you're a manufacturing company and you have high fixed costs, or you're an airline, you have high fixed costs, you have airplanes, you have staff, unions, you have um, uh, you know, uh, all those, uh, in the infrastructure, you have to pay for the terminals. You have to pay a lot, very high fixed costs. It doesn't matter whether you have customers or not. You still have to pay very high fixed costs, right? 
So when you buy a stock like that, the profit usually is smaller because they have very high expenses, right? Does that mean you shouldn't buy it? No, it doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it. You just have to understand. However, when you buy a company, the stock of a company like, say, Google, Google doesn't have a lot of airplanes, right? Google has that nice, pretty office in Cupertino. It has some nice offices around, you know, has really good, interesting, smart people. But that's about it. So Google's profit may be much higher than the profit of a company like an airline. Because Google makes 30 or 40 or 50% return on, 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 on its investment, and the airline is making 3 or 4 or 5% return on its investment, doesn't mean the airline is a bad deal. Why? Valuation. We're going somewhere. It really depends on the valuation. So if Google is too expensive, it makes no sense to buy it. Buy the cheaper airline. How can you tell if Google is too expensive? Ah, now we're getting warmer. We're getting into the details of valuing companies. So when you want to buy real estate, for example, you go to, uh, you know, in California, real estate is very expensive. So you want to buy a piece of real estate. They call it per square foot. You buy it for $500 a square foot or $700 a square foot. You go to Fort Worth, Texas, and I use Fort Worth because we, we have an office over there. You use Fort Worth, Texas. It's a little bit cheaper over there, and maybe it's $100 a square foot. Is $500 a square foot in LA, $100 a square foot in Fort Worth. The price divided by square feet is the value. Per square foot remains constant. The price you pay for that square feet is a square foot, is the value. The same thing happens with stocks. Instead of price per square foot, we use price over earnings. So when a company makes a profit, the way we can tell whether the company is more expensive or is, is cheap or is, is pricey is based upon the price we're paying for each dollar of its earnings. Now, when a company is growing, so that's called price equity ratio, PE ratio, right? You hear PE ratio, PE ratio, PE ratio, price equity ratio, price earning, price earning multiple, it's the same thing. That's in general how we can tell what the price of a stock, the valuation of a stock is. Now, in general, when a stock is growing faster, the price we pay for each dollar of profits is higher. So let me tell you of the things I'll be talking to you about stocks next week. I'm gonna to talk to you about the different types of stocks, right? There's small company stocks, there's mid company stocks, small companies I'd say under 2 billion, there's mid cap stocks, uh, that's between uh, two and 10 billion, and there's large cap stocks, there's 10 billion and more. Then there's micro cap, there's pink sheets. Which one should you buy? You're hearing about small cap, mid, all these, how, which, how do you think about these stocks? There's different ways to buy a stock, right? You can buy it through, uh, through online. You can go to one of these, you know, uh, online where it's Robin Hood or it's uh, uh, Acorn or it's uh, Better Man or, or uh, you know, the, the online do-it-yourself tools. Or they have the robo-advisors like, uh, you know, Better Man and Wealthfront where they, they actually do it for you. Then you have the discount brokers, you know, we uh, who have, you know, sometimes you have an advisor who's attached to that, like Charles Schwab and TD Ameritrade that are merging now, uh, and, and Fidelity. And then you have um, full service investment uh, advisors like AXA advisors, uh, like Merrill Lynch, uh, and uh, 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 companies like that. And so which one is right for you? Who, where should you buy stocks, right? Where should you go to to purchase stocks? We'll delve deeper into uh, different types of mutual funds and how you should think about it. Well, there's this thing called index funds, right? Uh, uh, index funds are a certain type of mutual fund, right? Uh, that follow a certain index, a uh, certain similar index. Then you have exchange traded funds, ETFs. Whoa, there's all these terms you've been hearing about. An ETF is simply a type of mutual fund that's traded every day on the stock market. 